Hey everybody, welcome to the very first brand new you smart about stuff health and wellness video and today's guest I promised you all I would be bringing on experts well I've got the first of those experts today her name is Sherlyn Thomas and she is an expert on essential oils I personally love essential oils but I do not claim to know all that I probably should about them and so I am so happy to have Sherlyn here today as our guest because she's going to fill us in on everything we need to know about essential oils. Hey, Sherlyn, how are you? Good. Hey, thank you so much for having me on. And I'm so honored to be the first one to um, be on your show, to be able to talk about essential oils and things like that. So thank you so much for inviting me. Great. You are so welcome. I love what you do. So that's why when I decided to do this, I knew you had to be one of the first guests. So let's just get right to it. Tell us all about you, first of all. So I'm Sherilyn Thomas. I'm a mom of four kids and they are all teenagers at the moment. Um, that won't last for too much longer. My oldest is 19. My youngest is 14. So a lot going on in that little window. I have a kid that's um, out of the house now. He's on his own and living in Portland, Oregon at the moment. And then my uh, next one is a junior and then I have a sophomore and then I have an incoming freshman in the fall. So super busy family going 90 miles a minute all the time. And it's been um, a journey. I really, my greatest joy is my family. I love spending time with them. I do, um, everything that I can for them and teach them also to have the ability to think for themselves and to be able to fly and be successful in their lives. So one of the reasons that I started doing essential oils though is because of my youngest. She was, when she was born, she kept getting recurrent fevers. And so I was on a hunt to find some solutions for her because the things that like she was at three months old, she was in the hospital having a spinal tap to try and figure out why these papers were going on. I'm like, surely there's a different way or something that I can help this little one to be able to have better health in her life or things like that. And I just didn't really know what was going on. Neither did the doctors, but they clearly, she clearly had something and every other month or so she'd get a pretty high fever so their solutions that were recommended to me were fine but at the same time I thought if this is going to go on for a while I want to do something more healthy for her because I don't want to have to have a have to have her have a shot every time that this happens and so um so I went asking around who knows what to do and how to help kids with fevers and things like that when their temperatures rise. And that's kind of a normal thing with kids. They get, um, you know, little childhood illnesses and things like that. But, you know, the doctors didn't have any great solutions that I was comfortable with for the long term for her. And so I was just always watching and listening. By the time she was about two, I came across a wonderful herbalist here in Las Vegas who taught me a lot about just a wonderful tincture of echinacea, angustifolia root, and golden seal. And so just putting that in her mouth, I was able to help her manage her um, recurrent fevers. And that was fine and helpful. And I was really happy that we didn't have to do shots anymore or count the hours on our watch until we can give the next uh, dosage of medication, things like that. So it was really helpful to me to be able to have something that was effective and that I could trust. It was kind of from plants and it was like, okay, this is mother earth helping me to be a good mom, that kind of thing. Then my sister, she joined this company called doTERRA, which was just barely starting uh, 12 years ago. And so I'm always one to want to help people. So I said, OK, well, tell me what this is. And so she taught me what it was and just one drop of peppermint oil on my thumb and then up my daughter's spine would take that fever down in 15 minutes. I was sold. <laughs> I was like, oh, my goodness, 15 minutes. And, you know. In addition, if I needed to, I could reapply it and there was not really any um, difficulty or, you know, um, 
bad taste in the, in the mouth or any kind of thing like that. So it was really helpful and useful to be able to learn that. And that, that was so cheaper, faster, and more effective right there. I was really excited and happy to be able to try that. Since then, I've learned a lot of tricks of the things. You don't put these essential oils in your eyes. So little kids rub their <laughs> hands with it and then rub their eyes. And so I, we've learned all the hard way not to put it in your eyes. It, it won't like damage your eyes or anything, but it will sting so badly. And to wash it with soap and water is not what you do because that just amplifies the sting you if you happen to get it in your eye then you use what's called fractionated coconut oil or you can use uh, coconut oil just kind of any carrier oil to like dilute it okay so kids need the dilution so then the, and um so that's one thing and then the other thing you don't put it inside of your ears or inside of your nose just all those soft tissue areas are super sensitive. So just be careful that way. And also sometimes um, uh, some essential oils that are citrus oils tend to burn our skin if we're exposed to the sun. So if I put it on my hand right here, like bergamot, for example, and then go out into the sun, it'll probably burn right there, this little sunburn. So put it where the sun doesn't shine if the sun is shiny, okay? And bottoms of the feet are really wonderful and effective places and useful places to put the essential oils. So for children, back of the spine, bottom of the feet and dilute it. So that's kind of how I got started with this and since have just, you know, been on this wonderful journey learning lots more. As it has turned out, a lot of my daughter's um, recurrent fevers were actually um, emotionally based, like she would get emotionally upset and that would cause a spike in her fever. So what we do now, instead of trying to find out what's going on, if she has some kind of an ailment, it's actually, we just help her to support her emotions. And now, you know, she hasn't had those recurrent fevers for a few years, but it took me a long time to figure out that that's what it was. She's kind of an empathic person. And if people are upset or the emotions are kind of high, she will manifest a fever. <laughs> so that's really what it was all about. 12 years journey all along the path. And she's been um, kind of my reason and my guinea pig for being uh, involved with natural solutions and have been so for you know all of her lifetime at 14 years. So that's how I started. Okay, well, you mentioned doTERRA, which, which brings another question. So I too belong to a company that has essential oils. They say I do not promote them because we have like four and they're supposedly blend. And I don't know, I'm, I'm not overly impressed. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I do not promote the, the, it's one of the few products my company has that I absolutely do not promote. What makes one, how do you know which oils? There's so many different companies out there with, with oils. How do you know which ones are good and which, and which ones to avoid? How can you tell a good oil from a not so good oil? Yeah, okay, so that's a really excellent question. So my experience actually is exclusively with doTERRA. However, in this past um, 12 years or so, what has happened is now you can purchase essential oils at Walmart or CVS or anywhere, at the, you know, the grocery store. And um, so on the sides of those bottles, they will say things um, like this one. Where does it say? I don't have other brands, so I can't say where they say their things, but you would look at the labels. So here's this one. This was bergamot and has a label. And then on the side, you can see it says supplemental facts. Supplemental facts on doTERRA's bottles means that it's okay to internally ingest them. Please don't ever, 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 everyone has to promise me that they will never take internally any other brand because it's not been tested to that level. This one is called um, certified therapeutic grade. Well, I don't think you can see that. 
on the side. But anyway, that's what it says on there. And um, what that means is like, for example, the requirements for labeling are if it has 10% bergamot inside of it, it can be called pure and it can be called therapeutic. And there's no industry standard for that. So you don't know what else is in there for the other 90%. It could be diluted, it could be weeds, it could be like farmers, like cow stuff, I don't know. It could be anything, but they only have to put 10% of bergamot in there for it to be called bergamot. Whereas as doTERRA's, it, this is 100% all the way pure and it's been tested by outside third party um, testing facilities, also doTERRA test theirs in, internally. So the testing is important and the labeling is important and the, um, the sourcing is important. When I was studying with the herbalist, she taught that where you get your herbs, where you get your essential oils really, really matters. So you don't want any fillers or additives or pesticides or, you know, unknown things getting into your, uh, especially your essential oils because they go into your skin quickly. Like if you apply something with aloe vera, it goes um, to seven layers transdermal through the skin. So all of that, that it takes with it, like you want it to be pure. If it's going into your body, you want it to be pure. You don't want it to have any like chemicals or difficult things that don't match up with our cells. Because these are plant-based and because they are tested and they are pure, they can go um, into our cells and have our cells be nourished and have them be healthy. So what Deltera does, and I think it's up to 90, something plus percent, 90, a minimum 90%, but I can't remember what it is at the moment, but 90% of their sources are from farmers that they have um, exclusive contracts with those farmers. So doTERRA doesn't farm and doesn't grow lavender in their company's backyard type thing. They don't do that. They go to where it's indigenously sourced. So wherever it's been grown for hundreds of centuries, and they contract with those farmers who know how to do it, have been doing it for centuries and that have been passed down from father to son to daughter to all the things. And they contract with those and they have 90% plus, maybe 97, I don't even know the number, but um, exclusive contracts with those farmers. And so nobody else, no other vendor, no other company can purchase from them. They just pretty much have bought them and they pay them so equitably and fairly that they want to they're sought after because doTERRA is now the largest essential oil company in the world these growers know that and so it's kind of like um very uh elite to be able to work with the largest essential oil company in the world i don't even know all the countries that they are but they're you know, from Oman to Kenya to um, Italy to the United States, lots of different places that they're sourced from where the farmers know how to do it and have been uh, doing that for many, many years. So you mentioned ingesting. So when I first started using them, I basically used them because I have allergies bad. And uh, so I was basically using like a, a eucalyptus oil and something I don't even remember what in a, in a in a diffuser in my room to help clear my head because I don't like taking any kind of medication. And so I was was using this, and that is that is how I think most people think of essential oils. I don't think any of us would say, yeah, let me let me, let me take a couple drops of, of whatever you know lavender oil today. <laughs> so. You can it. Why would you ingest them? Like I said, I think most people like me, we think of, I put them in my oil diffusers and, you know, my house smells pretty and I feel relaxed yes, if I yes. use the lavender and I can breathe if I'm using the like eucalyptus. Um, but I'm not sure many people would think, let me add a little lemon oil to my water today. 
as opposed to just squeezing the lemon in there. Why, why would you do that? Why would yeah, you? That's an excellent question. So backing up just a tiny bit, um, essential oils can be used aromatically, topically, and some can be used internally. So aromatically, we want everything to smell nice. We want our air to be clean. There are some blends that actually cleanse the air. Uh, there's a blend from doTERRA called Purify that does that. If you have like a, if you burnt your, so we burnt the pizza for lunch today because I was busy and my other two kids were busy. And so there it kept cooking. So now <laughs> you can diffuse Purify or lemon and it'll get the smell out of the stinky burnt pizza smell. So, um, so aromatically is what um, is commonly used. And now when we use it aromatically, people sometimes use things that plug into their plugs and whatever, but all of those are from synthetic things and not from natural essential oils from plants. So those kind of candles and pluggy things, I'm highly allergic to them. <laughs> <laughs> they make me cough and sneeze. And if I go to my friend's house where they're burning this lovely, wonderful pumpkin smelling candle, I have to ask them kindly and graciously to please um, extinguish it because I can't breathe. And I can't, it's coughing and sneezing and whatever. So I always have a reaction to that because it's not a natural thing that my body can um, take. So there's that one thing. And then uh, topically, you know, um, essential oils are commonly known for just being very calming and relaxing. So the lavender oil on the bottom of the feet or on your arms or on your pillow is very relaxing and calming. And it does go through this, through the skin layers and you can um, help it to stay in, in your skin rather than just flash off with using a carrier oil like fractionated coconut oil or jojoba oil or whatever. Um, even just coconut oil regular, organic regular. But anyway, so that um, is a common use, but the unusual use, as you mentioned, is for internal use. And the thing is that some of these essential oils are so beneficial to our cells that it's, um, and to our, and to our brain cells, to our heart and to our organs and things like that, that it would be helpful to get it to the source of where it needs to be um, uh, to, to help. So for example, I don't have my frankincense out here, but you can put two drops of frankincense, doTERRA's frankincense under the tongue, right there, two drops every day. And it really helps to, um, with inflammation, it helps with pain, it helps with um, occasional, um, you know, tensions, and it helps with uh, lots of different things with, um, but it also can cross the blood brain barrier. So it goes into the bloodstream, and it actually can get into the brain to help the brain to be more active and more um, um, resilient and, and vibrant and have things come to um, recall quickly. Obviously I need some. <laughs> so, so it goes under the tongue, goes quickly into the bloodstream. So in your water is another way that you can use the essential oils that are labeled properly like that. The supplemental facts is what you look for. And that's just, um, because it would go, it goes into the digestive system, it goes into the bloodstream, and it would work with the cells that are there that need those nourishments. Um, so for example, well, not this one, because that one's out. This one, this one is deep blue, and it comes in with a childproof cap, kind of this fat head cap. This one is not for internal use, but this one is a, um, really effective and helpful for muscles and tissue issues. You know, it comes in a lotion as well. So this little bottle, um, you could apply it topically as an essential oil, but also a whole entire bottle of this is in a lotion uh, type thing that helps with muscle and tissue issues. So you can use it any athlete um, that uses it, uses a product to kind of heat up the skin, then that, uh, that is kind of what that product is used similarly. Like, um, 
like on the, the legs to help the uh, muscles and tissues work properly and not to get inflammation. And um, it's also in a, in a roller bottle. So I don't, let's see. I did bring one of those out somewhere, but I don't know. Oh, here, it's hiding. This one's a hormone balancing blend called Clary Calm, but it comes with a roller bottle, a roller ball thing. So you can just apply it topically easily. And so that deep blue is available that way too. Muscle and tissue. This one's for hormones, hormone balancing. And I usually use it on reflex points, reflexology points on my feet, on my ankles. So um, the inside of the ankle is a is the kind of so pretend this is an ankle. <laughs> you put it here, like in the inside of the ankle, and that's kind of the uterine area that um, pinpoints that place on your body. So I put that one there every morning. Clary Calm. Um, what I like to put in my water is uh, lemon essential oil or wild orange. And those are very uplifting and happy. And lemon oil is a very gentle detoxing oil. So lemon essential oil is so versatile. So for example, you can um, scrub the bottoms of your pans and get the, and, it, and it's a cutter. It cuts the fat off of things like, you know, if you were had too much, uh, hamburger meat juice or whatever it is on the bottom of your pan you could cleanse it off with that because it cuts the grease really well and it does the same thing inside of our bodies it just cuts the grease and cuts the you know uh, toxins and helps us release them out of our system so lemon uh from the so lemon oil most of the citruses oils are steam distilled from the rind. So that's a different part than, you know, the juice when you juice the lemon and put that in your water. So juicing a lemon and putting that in your water, I use, I like to do a hot lemon water. So I have some tea type stuff, but without any tea, it <laughs> just, I'd like to juice the lemon into the water. And I like that for a gentle detox, but it's different than the, the rind. And it, to me, it doesn't taste like rindy, you know, it tastes like the lemon essential oil. Um, like, um, like the juice, but not exactly because it just has the aroma. So when you put your fingers together on a peppermint leaf, or when you touch a cilantro leaf, then those um, smells from that leaf are on now on your finger and then you can smell it. That is the essential oil. So when you're touching and rubbing the lemons, that's what the essential oil is. And that's what gets onto your hands and that's what you're smelling. And so then anyway, they have lots of great aromatic product properties as well as internal properties from the lemon, peppermint, um, and the orange as well. I hope that answered that question. It did, it did. Like I said, I, I learned as I was going along because I'm a, I am a huge student of, of natural wellness. I, I take no prescription medications. 65 years old, take no prescription medications, and I'm, I'm aiming to make it to my deathbed that way. Because <laughs> <Okay. Yes. laughs> I see too many people taking 15 and 20 pills a day, and it's like, I don't want to live that way. So I'm, I'm working very hard to learn all I can about natural and holistic ways of staying healthy and taking care of myself. So yeah, um, that answered that question. As I've learned a little bit about being able to actually ingest some of the oils. I did not know that about frankincense though, and I have frankincense in my cabinet. So I may be oh, trying good. that because I'm a little foggy, you know, some days I'm a little foggy, I'm a little foggy, I admit. We're getting up there. Yep. <laughs> yep. Little picture wouldn't hurt. You talk about carrier oils. I use sweet almond oil almost exclusively. Um, but does it make a difference what kind you use? I know you mentioned several different kinds. So um this one is from doTERRA. It's a fractionated coconut oil. And what this one, what this one's advantage is, is it doesn't go rancid and it kind of doesn't have an expiration, you know. I think they put one on 
maybe, but it, it lasts without going rancid ever. So that's the advantage of that one. Whereas it kind of also doesn't matter. So you can make lotions with um, this one, or you can make lotions with your sweet almond oil, with the jojoba oil, um, and just add your own essential oils. You can make um, lip balms with them. You can make, um, I make lots of salves. Um, you can make salves with them, things like that. Um, so I think it more, it's which carrier oil you use is A, it's a personal preference, and B is what are you using it for? So if it's just to spread, like if you want to cover the whole back area, any kind of oil is fine to spread things around and to dilute. It's fine to dilute it with whatever you have. I say even the kitchen olive oil <laughs> works fine for dilution as well. I prefer something that's first cold pressed, um, extra virgin olive oil, and that's, you know, the better one, rather than just the, um, you know, whatever goes with your balsamic vinaigrette. <laughs> so, but that's totally fine to use any type of carrier oil. The, our kitchens have lots of healing um, products in them anyway, and one of them is olive oil. Olive oil just by itself, the first cold press, the um, first cold press um, and extra virgin one, it also is wonderful just to put on, if you have bumped yourself and you know it's gonna bruise, put olive oil on it right away and you won't bruise. I didn't know that. Yeah. I'll be backing up olive oil because I, I, I bounce off walls regularly. So. Yes, I buy the big bottles, not the jugs, but the pretty big bottles because I use that to make my salves. So that's a good question. Um, let's see, there was one other thing I thought of. Oh, so, oh, some of these are put in bottle. I thought for sure I did, maybe somebody, anyway. So some of these are put in bottles um, in capsules, pre uh, prepackaged capsules, capsules so that we can easily take them for internal uses. And for example, there's one that's really great for um, just having those synapses continue to fire into our, into our older ages. And that's uh, turmeric. It's called turmeric dual capsule, D-U-O, duo capsule. And turmeric is an herb and it's really great to take that, but it's also um, a tricky one for our system to digest. And so you always need to put it with pink pepper or black pepper or something. But what doTERRA has done is they've taken the turmeric herb and encapsulated it on the outside with the turmeric oil. And so it has double encapsulated and it has the herb and the oil. So it's really fantastic for digestion, inflammation, and you know, mental acuity for the longer term. So I really like that one. The other thing that is so important when we're considering, you know, you had said, mentioned that you want to stay away from taking too many medications in our, into your older age to the point that you would like to stay off of them completely all the way till life's completion, whenever that is. I have the same kind of um, goal and things like that. I am not anti-medical. I am not anti anything like that. I, I go to the doctor for a diagnosis because I don't know <laughs> how to figure out what's going on. So, but at the same time, I'm not on any medications either. And I hope to not be able to not to have to be because I want to have the information from them, but I also don't want the other side of it. If I can do something naturally, I'm believe me, I'm going to try it because um, there's so many options available to us that are healthy and good for our longer life, longer term lifestyle. So one thing that people should be doing is taking a very, very, very high quality vitamin. And doTERRA's um, vitamins are called Lifelong Vitality. And they are actually the number one selling product of the company over essential oils. So that's, um, I think, important to think about. One thing that's important as we look at what type of um, vitamins that we should be taking is... Um, Again, they're sourcing, but 
but more so, but in addition to that i would say how they are processed so these vitamins you can open up the capsules dump them out and stir them into your applesauce that's the kind of vitamin that you want to be taking not something that's a tablet that's hard that's been cooked and that has been treated and it's all smushed into a hard tablet that is extremely difficult for our liver to process it's nearly impossible it really does more damage than good so if anybody's taking those hard capsules that you can buy at the grocery store that you can't pop open and dump into your applesauce then please stop taking them because they are not good for your liver they're damaging to the liver and so then you have to take medications to help your liver and things like that so it's best to take um herbs plants, <laughs> supplements that are natural, organic, that are grown in places where things grow rather than a factory. And so it's really, really important that we look at where we're getting our supplements. And the reason we need to supplement is because, you know, great, great grandma, when she had planted her garden and she harvest harvested her cabbage and her broccoli, she had a high, high level of um, vitamins and nutrients because the soil was rich and beautiful. But now 50 years, 100 years later, our soil has depleted significantly and the nutrients that are available in the soil are not nearly what they were even 50 years ago. So it's kind of 2021, we have to supplement because the nutrients are just not to the same level as they were when grandma was gardening in her backyard. So it's really something that we uh, have to look at, especially if we want to live healthily in our longer years to be able to uh, take in supplements that are good, that are solid. Yes, and I am also not anti-medicine. So let me, let me just clarify that. I am not anti-doctors. I am a cancer survivor, obviously. I would not be a survivor if I had not gone to the doctor because I don't know <laughs> any essential oils that would cure cancer, okay? <laughs> there aren't any that I am aware of. So yes, I am not anti-medicine. I just think that our doctors are not as well educated in some of the more holistic forms of, of wellness as they should be. And so yes, like you, I go, I get their opinion, I get their diagnosis. And then I do my research and determine this is something that I can handle on my own or no, this is something that I need to have medical intervention. So, but, but I always look for the most natural option first because yeah. I know people who take pills and then take pills to handle the symptoms that are being caused by their pills that they're taking. So, yeah, exactly. I don't want to do that. <laughs> so, now, do, so I have a cabinet full of essential oils. I'm the only one that uses them. Um, and I, I, let's make sure I rotate them. With it. Anyway, do they expire? I've had some people ask me if they expire. I go through mine pretty quickly, so I don't know if they expire, but do they expire? Do they have a shelf life? So technically they do have a shelf life, but it's really long. So these are all packaged in these dark amber bottles and for a reason, you know, this um, on the bottom, this says expires 2021. Oh, that's 2021. This patchouli it has an expiration on the bottom and it has a number 161. 538A. So for doTERRA, you can go on to source to you, source to you, not letter U, source to you.com. And I can type in that number and I can look up all the stuff that has to do with my bottle. So that's a really great advantage. It will, I don't know, obviously I purchased it a while ago, but these, once they are, if they're not opened, are fine for 10 years. If you open them, then they have an expiration. And I guess this one is 2021 sometime this year. It will expire this patchouli. But um, I, I think it will be fine for me anyway. My judgment is it'll be fine for three years. 
it still has the same. Well, you can't. Here I am trying to have you smell this. Can you smell, can you smell this patchouli through the microphone? The camera? I guess that is my moment of, um, you know, whatever. Frankincense, <laughs> put it under your tongue. Yeah. So this time expires in 2024. So the expirations are on the bottle, on the bottom for doTERRA anyway. So yes, they're fine for 10 years. So the thing is, is I like to, for example, when um, we have emergency situations, I kind of like to stock up on my favorites. I want always to have on guard frankincense. I want lime, thyme, excuse me, marjoram, and oregano. Those ones really are the ones that will help us to maintain a healthy body for a long time. So I really look to make sure that I have a few bottles of those on hand, especially when we go into the winter season, I've got to make sure I have full bottles of all of those ready to go. In addition, when, you know, just for longer term for we like to do food storage. We like to do essential oil storage. So I make sure that we have the ones that are really critical for um, emergency situations on hand um, in time. I have many people on my doTERRA team who say, oh, Sherilyn, I forgot to order. Do you have any? No, you're responsible to get your own stuff. And I really, I don't carry an inventory. Like this is my basket of stuff that I use for me personally. And and I, you know, I put other things around the house for my family to use, but they know where to go and get them. But my wonderful team, they also know that Sherilyn doesn't carry stuff for them. They carry their own because it's really important for everyone to be prepared for whatever comes your way. If you um, need it, you have it, you have it ready. So, um, so good for three years, good for three years open, 10 years on. I'll bet you weren't one of the ones out there hoarding toilet paper this past year either, were you? <laughs> no, <laughs> we were not. <laughs> we were not. We did run tight. We did, we we were, <laughs> yes, we did have some at the ready you and I didn't worry ready. about it. But after a whole month of that, I was getting like, um, people, are we going to be like stopping this? You know, like. one of my pet peeves. Bees, just bees, I'm not saying you need to have like a bunker with 15 years worth of food and you know a small arsenal of ammunition and weapons but you need to be ready for some things <laughs> okay yes, yes. <laughs> you you do need to be ready for some things and you know we need to there were things that caught us by surprise you know I like to bake and I know how to bake bread I'm not as amazing at it as my mother is but you know, people were learning how to bake and flour was running out. And I'm like, wow, okay, I guess I need more flour than I thought because, you know, you just never know. There were things that kind of caught me by surprise by, but to, by, and that toilet paper was one. And so I'm like, okay, I got to think of that as well. I know there were some things that when I went to the store a couple of times and things were off the shelf, I was like, Really, that would not be something that I would guess people would be snatching up and hoarding, but okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but it was such a strange time to see the grocery stores like completely empty. I'm like, why did <laughs> hundreds of thousands, millions probably dollars of inventory gone in three days or a week or however long it was? It was just incredible. It was, it was crazy, it was crazy, crazy times, but. Hopefully you all will listen to me next time when I tell you you need to have some stuff, okay? Yes. You know why, yes. But you need to have some stuff, okay? Yes. And if you don't know what stuff you need to have, we'll talk and I'll tell you what yeah. stuff you need to have, okay? Exactly. Well, like the thing I just said with the essential oils, doTERRA has, I don't even know, hundreds of essential oil products. I named five probably. I think five is fine. Just make sure that you have five for your emergency time and situation so that you can help people and yourselves through, you know, whatever comes your way until you can get to a doctor or until you can get, you know, 
through that. And if you think this isn't going to happen again, you won't. Okay. Just tell it right now. There will, a... be one, okay? there will be another one. Okay. But there will be another time when we're all sitting here going. So, yes. get your yeah. oil. Get the right one. She can tell you what one the right ones are. I have a bunch, but she can tell you what ones you absolutely positively have to have or should have. I did yeah. not know that about the turmeric, though. I always wondered why you put a little. I make golden milk. I love it. It's something I drink a lot at night. And I was like, yeah. but you put pepper in your, it was, it was a hard time for me to get to putting black pepper in my milk. Yeah. Yeah. It doesn't really add to the flavor any, but I'm <laughs> assuming there's a reason. And I'm, you know, I, I follow yeah. the recipe, but so now I know. <laughs> okay. Oh, and I'm not a huge fan of the, of the taste of turmeric. Most of these, my husband says, what are we, an Italian bakery, you know, that kind of thing. But the, the greatest thing is you can get them, all, like the turmeric duo capsule is already encapsulated. You don't have to taste it or smell it or anything. It just goes in and down, and but it nourishes those cells. It takes care of all of that and helps so much with the inflammation. And to me, I'm used to bitter herbs. I'm used to all of the, you know, kind of stuff that makes your tongue turn brown you know but i'm i'm very used to that but at the same time not everyone is everyone thinks of essential oils as oh these are so nice they make my house smell good i don't think of them nearly quite as the same way i do diffuse i'm diff running my diffuser now but mostly my diffuser has eucalyptus or any of the citrus things because to lift the mute mood or clean out the smells but um, there's also benefits for emo managing the emotions and things like that. But I use them mostly for health purposes, to help my heart, to help my liver, to help the kidneys work right, to help the, you know, all of the organs, my skin, all of the things. So that's what I'm, I work for, work that you work and use them for. And that's what I find the most benefit is because they go right into those cells and help those cells to kind of do a check. Are you a healthy cell? Yes. Keep you, nourish you. Are you a not healthy cell? No. Let's wash you out. Let's detox and get out of there. So it really is beneficial to our cells and the, because they're plant-based, they our cells talk to plants you know we eat spinach and our cells go oh, spinach you know they love it when he, we do our juicing and stuff like that that our cells just like are on fire they love it they just so much energy is released and all this kind of thing same kind of thing with your essential oils because they're plants our bodies recognize that and they take it in and say more so I know you've done a lot of studying and, and reading, and, and I do a lot of reading and research, but most people are not going to be bothered with that. So yeah. is there like a place, a table, a database, something where they can go and say, oh, I have back pain, so I want this oil? Or is there some place where there's a list of what oils do what, so they know what they're buying? So um, what I recommend for my clients always to do is get a book. There's um, databases and things you can look online, but uh, I don't usually do that. I usually get a book. There's an uh, essential life book that you can get from aromatools.com or oillife.com or Amazon. And that is a great, great resource. It's kind of like a coffee table type book. It's beautiful, great pictures, recipes in there, as well as, you know, just how to use it for pain, for emotions, for heart, for all the things. And um, it's really beneficial. There's also an app you can get. I use the app eoebooks.com, sells an app. Um, so... I'm just going to open it really quickly. Oh, not that main menu. So EOE books, EOE books, and then it has an app. And in this, I don't know if you can see safety with essential oils, health concerns, oils, products, um, 
applying them, a glossary, things like that. So lots of resources, um, either the app or the um, book, I think is, I don't know, I'm kind of old school. I still have books in my house. <laughs> <laughs> I like my book. I'm with you. I like my book. So it's okay. We like our book. I have an e-reader. I don't think, actually, I don't think I have it anymore. I think I gave it away because my husband bought it for me and I said, I'm going to do this. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it, doesn't, it doesn't have that smell of fresh ink and you can't hear the binding crack when you open it for the first time. I'm like, no. <laughs> and I can't sit on my bookshelf and like, <laughs> okay, I think, oh, yes, I did have one other question. So, carrier oils, we were talking about them. Why do we need them? Why would I want to use a carrier oil? Why would I not just want to take, sprinkle some lavender oil on my hand and just like rub it completely? Okay, so there's probably two reasons for that. Um, one is flash off so when you put lavender oil or i don't know this one's serenity it has lavender in it so if i put this on my hand normally i'd put it um probably near my shoulders or something serenity oh it's very calming so i put it on there and immediately the air is it's flashing off it's taking it and you know it's kind of like um what is that the water cycle, <laughs> you know, when the water, the water cycle, the rain comes down, and then it goes up into the sky. Anyway, so it's kind of like that. So there's flash off. So in order for it to go into the skin and nourish and stay in the skin, it's helpful to put the carrier oil on top or mix it with and just the same amount, you know, there it goes, and just put the same amount and then it won't flash off so much. So it keeps it in and drives it into the skin. So that's one reason. The second reason is sometimes people's skin are very sensitive to the essential oils because one drop of peppermint essential oil is the therapeutic equivalent of 28 cups of peppermint tea. So peppermint tea is very nourishing, nourishing for our digestive system, it's wonderful but you have one drop of peppermint oil, it's 28 times more powerful, okay? So some people are very sensitive to that. Oh, I'm having a thunderstorm here. In Las Vegas, it's raining. <laughs> so um, some people have sensitive skin. And so if you, um, if you do have, my skin is kind of bulletproof. <laughs> I don't have too much sensitive sensitivities to the oils, except for here, like on my chest area. Sometimes if I apply Douglas fir, Siberian fir, like two or three days in a row, I'll get some redness. So in order to not get the redness, then you put the carrier oil because they are so powerful. So powerful. Awesome. Yeah, I learned that lesson the hard way and I'm not gonna tell you what oil I used or what I used it for, but I learned very quickly that it's like, that was not a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> I learned things the hard way too. There's sometimes I'm not a better teacher than going, oh, maybe not that. <laughs> yeah, that, that hurt. <laughs> yeah. It was worth more. <laughs> but if you've done something wrong that's hurtful, that's like giving you discomfort or pain, then just add a carrier oil to that and it'll dilute it. And in 15 minutes, you'll be feeling better. I didn't have you to tell me these things back then. So, yeah. I, so I, I had a customer, <laughs> I had a customer who won a um, bottle, a sample bottle of oregano oil. Oregano is hot. It's a hot oil. She said, oh, this is going to be great. So she put it under her tongue. Uh, she was on fire. She was like, what did I do? So she learned, no, do that ever again. Oregano is a hot oil. Use it in a capsule. It's fine, but you can, but um, always dilute it. You know, if you put it in a capsule, put a drop of fractionated coconut oil with it or your mm -hmm. olive oil. I don't think sweet almond oil is ingestible. I'm not sure, but um, this is and olive oil is. So put a drop with the oregano and then it will be fine. Yeah. I don't make my own capsules, so we're good. The only thing I do do sometimes, like I do have, I have some lower bottles, so I will, like I mix the clary sage and lavender together 
in a little yes. in a roller bottle and I carry that with me all the time so it's like wonderful stress in, <laughs> stress in. <laughs> <laughs> more <laughs> and the wonderful thing about these essential oils is you can use them frequently and you can like for example some people oh i need 25 drops because i'm really in upstate it's actually more frequently that's better and less so one drop more times uh, throughout the day is is fine and healthy and your body likes that so frequently less less okay. quantity. This has been awesome. Um, yes. So if people want to get a hold of you about your oils, how do they reach you? So um, my Facebook page is Herbal Essentials. My Facebook group is Herbal Essentials Community. But you can just find me on Facebook. If you're on Facebook at Cheryl and Thomas, send me a message and I'll answer that way. My website is my, it's kind of long. It's mydoterra.com slash potent nature. So mydoterra.com slash potent nature. Um, if you need my, my doTERRA ID number, it's number 3082. So if you go to doTERRA.com and you forget who I am, it's number 3082. Um, I don't know. That's how you can reach me. Cheryl and Thomas, there's not too many of us. <laughs> and I will put all of these in the comments when I post the video so you don't have to remember them. Um, awesome. That's Good. Something that I absolutely love. She's forever holding classes on different things in her group. So you want to hang out there if you can hang yeah. out. Group we have our open. classes every Wednesday and every Friday evening. And I record the Friday ones and plop them into my group too. Yeah. All righty. Well, this has been great. So I appreciate even I've learned some things and, and I've been using oils for a little bit and, and I do a lot of reading and I learned some stuff. So I am really yeah. glad we did this. Awesome. Well, well thank you so much. Again, it was a real honor to be uh, invited to speak with you and such an honor to be the first of your experts. That's awesome. Thank you. Thanks so much for being here. And that's it. Thanks guys for showing up and listening. Have a great night.